All right, so kicking off the July 27th DevSync meeting. And all right, so today uh, we're kicking off a new exciting project uh, in starting to add some uh, more community features around Precise. And uh, we're laying out the roadmap for that. So um, I think uh, there might be some discussion about that today. And we've got, um, well, I'll just start with doing my update. Um, on the hardware side, we should be getting back our first rev of the boards uh, this week. And uh, so that's pretty exciting. In fact, I think we actually got the first rev of the boards today, but there was an error on them. That, and they, they actually came so fast that they, they shipped them before he could fix the error on Saturday morning. So, <laughs> um, so he, he sent out another order on Saturday and they should be here in a day or two. So that's pretty cool. And um, so yeah, maybe by the end of the week we, uh, with, you know, if we're really lucky, we might have a working board, but that seems unlikely. Um, we're officially kicking off our fundraising process today. So for all the investors out there, if you, if you didn't get an email from us, then uh, you know, reach out and uh, we'd be happy to talk to you. And other than that, I think uh, we should just get into the regular updates. Um, let's try to keep it a little short. I was noticing in reviewing our notes from the other day that um, we tend to take about five or six minutes each, and uh, maybe we can um, just try to be a little bit more brief and save some more time for uh, the discussion at the end. So um, with that, I'll, uh, let's kick it off with Chris Gesling. Uh, damn, I hate going first. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so I did some more work around the um, the service startup uh, this week, uh, which is transitioning from ugly towards good. Um, so um, merged in the service hooks that OK did, which um, tell you whether the services um, started or not. Uh, we'll need to iterate and improve on those over time, but. Um, that's working well, uh, and um, we've got some new TTS, festival TTS support coming. Uh, uh, it's that time to do a, a release of Microsoft Core, but um, you know, that in itself is a bit of work, so I haven't put time into it um, yet. Uh, and I should have been more prepared to jump in earlier, so that's me. <laughs> okay, uh, next <laughs> clockwise around my screen is Chris Fair. Yeah, so the good was uh, I went through our uh, bug fix sprint and cleaned it up a little bit, made some things that were bugs, but not marked as tasks actually bugs and moved some stuff out of there that wasn't really part of that sprint, so I moved some things around. And while I was in JIRA, I created um, the Epic and all the tickets um, for the upcoming precise projects. Um, so we can go over that and now we wanna organize that later. But um, that's all done. Uh, went into Confluence also and started writing some documentation on um, what the tools we're talking about building will do and what they need to do and how they will do them. Um, which I hope to publish in the next day or so. So that was all good. Uh, nothing really bad, but the ugly being that I'm still in um, Maryland. So um, I'm not getting as much, uh, my velocity is not quite what it usually is. Okay, understandable. Um, all right, thanks. Uh, Derek. All right, uh, so mostly just been working on project rollover stuff, um, not a whole lot on the Mark II hardware, um, other than what Michael talked about earlier. Uh, I can show you guys what I will be sending out tomorrow. Um, so here's a few of them. <clears throat> you guys see that? So I've got- oh, Yeah, clear one. Very nice. 
They are, um, they're kind of semi-translucent. I was going for that late 90s kind of effect. <laughs> no, it's actually, uh, the material is, is a little bit more durable than um, some of the other stuff. So if it like gets dropped or something, they will hopefully last. Uh, the other stuff I used in the past was a bit brittle. So um, yeah, those are uh, pretty much wrapping up. And Charlie's, I, I told him to just keep working on it. He's, instead of attending the meeting, he's um, wrapping things up as we speak. Uh, so yeah, that's all good. We did the testing, heat, heat's fine. We tested over the weekend, uh, didn't fail. Uh, I ran it through just the simple skills tests uh, this morning and no problems. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so just got to get these boxed up and I need to do a little bit of testing tonight and then box them up. So they should be going out the door tomorrow. Um, yeah, and then hopefully for the, uh, once we get those out the door, uh, get back on um, a, uh, a quick enclosure for when we get the, the first SJ prototype. It'll be laser cut for the first one. So that's it for me. Awesome. All right. Let's see. Um, oh, no. Oh, the order is completely changed. Okay, Ken. <laughs> So uh, let's see. So I, I don't know about good, bad, and ugly. Everything's good. It's all good. So uh, I created a um, kind of a roadmap wiki confluence page for the precise project as I came to understand it. Cross-linked it with the, what is it, precise 59, I guess, epic. Um, so perhaps, Chris, for your documentation, to, to make it easier, you could just inject it into that page. Uh, that page is basically ordered in order of execution or belief a perceived order of execution. So if you disagree with that, that would be a good place to surface that. And if the products you think you're working on are different than the ones that are uh, enunciated on that page, that would also be a good place to, to kind of call that out. I think we're in sync, though, because, um, you know, I did that without realizing you had done the epic. And then when I tied it back to the epic, I can see where the tickets would fall into that page. So I think we're in sync. Um, and I yeah, there's a summary there, but I'd rather put the details, like all the design and stuff on a different page for each one and we link those. Cause that thing yeah. will become massive if we put all the different things in there. So. Sure, and we can keep this more as a high level roadmap summary. So that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and, and I'm interested when you do your detail, we can continue to have our repartee regarding trade-offs and design uh, issues and things like that. Um, I think you've noticed uh, already we have a, a little bit of a disagreement, which I think is healthy, regarding how to go into these projects. I'm always looking for the how do we leverage what we have existing and prop it up and then cut new tickets for enhancements. Uh, and you're, you want to take the opportunity to kind of make them better and look at all of the things we know about upcoming and try to potentially get them into a re-architecture. And I think that that's a healthy uh, trade-off there, that there's good trade-offs in either case, so we should probably keep that line of communication going. Um, uh, and again, as I mentioned, I updated some of those tickets as well with some of my input. Um, I isolated the data to be deleted and I'm ready for the go-ahead to push the atomic button, which I got earlier in the meeting. So I will whack that data ASAP. I provided everybody with a more detailed uh, analysis of what files and what accounts are being deleted. It probably is a CSV that contains about 75,000 rows, as opposed to the one I sent out last week, which was the summary roll up by account, which was about 207 rows. So between those two CSV files, you should have all the information necessary to reach out and communicate to the community about what's happened and what we're planning on doing. Um, so uh, I just, you know, I also have a document in the works, um, like Chris, which I haven't published yet, which is a kind of a presentation overview of the entire precise process and ecosystem, if you will, which uh, my intent is to merge that with the document that Josh sent me, which was how that used to be. So basically to take what I've got integrate what Josh sent me and combine them to become current. So that's the last piece of documentation I'm currently working on. Was able, also able to get a little work squeezed in between all of this 
documentation. So I ran an initial set on Saturday of, geez, I want to say 15 or 20 um, models and resultant performance output against the high and low pitched test data sets where I started looking at the hyperparameter tuning, but from a manual perspective. Uh, and there was two reasons for this. The first was to validate some assumptions that I have, which is A, we need more data. And, uh, and then the other assumption is that B, more epics would serve us well. And so um, there is some uh, lip service to that in there. There's two training data sets that are vastly different in size that are used in that uh, output data that I, I posted on that ticket, uh, or not ticket, but on the uh, hyperparameter uh, tuning wiki page. And then I also ran uh, with the concept originally from what I've learned regarding the relationships between batch and epic size and between dropout rate and um, recurrent units. Um, and you can kind of see the logic in there. I mean, because it was manually done, so you can see where I kind of hit one. I, I try to hold like all hyperparameters constant and just vary one and go up and go down a couple of notches and see if there's any improvement and then try to run with that. So I think that that is somewhat self-explanatory, but it's, it's just scratching the surface and it's a manual analysis. But I wanted to get some variance in there and see what hyperparameters had what effect on model performance. And so I've updated that wiki page with that. It can be found from the main precise wiki page um, under hyperparameter tuning. Uh, and that is it for me. I will uh, complete or try to complete this documentation this week and um, get, like I said, the data deleted and then work with Chris on um, some of the uh, architectural uh, trade-offs and, and things that go into uh, propping up the uh, uploader and tagger into the um, continuous integration environment we have called Selene. That's it for me. Okay, thanks, Ken. Um, and Josh is here. Um, just figure I'd give you a chance to say anything if you want before we get into no, the um, discussion. It sounds like people are making good progress. I'm glad to see the the uh, privacy issue being resolved. Um, I'm writing an update about that. Uh, the uh, I've got the ball with the um, the customer. I'll reach out and and have a chat with with rollover and make sure that. Um, that they're that they understand where we are. Um, I do have some input, which I've dropped into the into the um, chat about how to organize those drives. Voyage Linux does a really good job with it. Um, you know, I have I have Voyage machines that have been on for um, actually powered up for nearly a decade with with no problems at all. That are using Compact Flash as their storage mechanism. It's a the trick is to treat Flash differently from the way that you treat a regular hard drive in terms of how you're organizing the file system and how you're doing read and writes. Um, and I don't really have anything else for DevSec. The European Union is about to carry some water for us, so that's really exciting. And uh, uh, lots of other good things going on. Really happy to be. Uh, pushing forward with, with fundraising again. All right, thanks. Um, so uh, I noticed at least one topic come up that we should really uh, discuss, um, and that was that uh, we haven't done an update in a while. Um, and um, currently, those updates really just go to the Mark 1. And I was wondering if there's anything that's preventing us from doing that. Um, especially the migration from uh, the to the major versions of core that we've been doing. I know we, we did an upgrade uh, when we went from the the Pi three based to the Pi four based you know uh, model for the uh, for the Mark two. And I was wondering if that has any repercussions with respect to the Mark one. I don't know about the Mark one Mark one, but my input question is when we upgrade. Mycroft Core, does that automatically get pushed out to every device, or is it a opt-in update? Minor updates um, are pushed out to everybody. Major updates, we ask. 
the only reason I ask, is, yeah, the only reason I ask is nothing is more annoying to have a working system, power it down, get up the next morning and power it up, and it's no longer working, and you didn't do anything. So that would be my only concern there. Yeah. So the the minor updates are you know any twenty twenty dot oh two dot something. That that's a minor update, so that should happen automatically. And then any switching from twenty oh two to twenty oh eight, that will prompt the user and say, Hey, there's an update available, would you like to update? If they say yes, then then it goes through that update process. Um, we do whenever we do a release of Microsoft Core, we do a lot of testing um, on PyCroft Mark One um, and Linux um, and you know now Mark Two. Uh, but we, yeah, we do that across those devices to, to make sure that it's going to, well, to host, <laughs> to do a final check. So obviously the CI process should be catching anything that um, that is a problem, but uh, as part of the release process, we've just been doing that manual check as, a, as an extra safety mechanism because, you know, exactly as you say, Ken, you don't want to have your device stop working when you didn't do anything a bit. To it, um, so yeah, I think uh, it, it takes you know the better part of a day to do one of those releases, but I think it'd be worth doing a doing a release at all. Just to make sure we're clear, when we do minor point releases, there's no deprecation in that release, correct? Correct. Yeah. Only the majors, just. All the miners have to be backwards compatible. And so any skill that works on, you know, 2002, any skill that works on 2002 should work on every minor, minor release of 2002. Um, and so then when we switch over to a new major release, then the, the skills repo also um, switches over to, over to a new major release of the skills repo and we test all the skills to see if they work on the new major release and if they do then they can be automatically um you know put into that uh into that new branch um and if they don't then they get bumped and we we let the authors know that you know there was a problem and and invite them to fix it up so that it can get re-added and we do release notes for major and minor releases yeah yeah perfect okay so our 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 typical schedule would have would have been uh, last year, for example, would have been to put out a 2008 release. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And so that's coming up pretty soon. Um, do you should we schedule that now? Um, did you do it on the first of the month, the last of the month, just some convenient time in the middle? Generally, by the end of the month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then let's get that on the calendar so that we can account for it. That's going to take you a day or more. Um, and, uh, yeah. And so that yeah. process, like I, like I, like I asked, uh, so that does not affect our ability to, um, cause I know there were some issues with the, the Wi-Fi setup and things like that, that are different between the Mark one and the Mark two. Right. So they're independent of course, so they shouldn't, shouldn't okay. be affected. Gotcha. All right. Um, okay. But I would like to get this yeah. service availability stuff into into um, twenty oh eight for sure. Mm. Okay. I don't know. It shouldn't really be a breaking change, but just in case there is anything in there that we do need to. Right. Achieve. Yeah, it's a fairly significant change, though. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, was there any other discussion necessary on our precise roadmap? Uh, it sounds like you guys had a good discussion before I was able to show up. Um, mostly that the, to me, just buy off on, in your IU, that that's the scope we talked about um, okay. know, last week, and I didn't do any kind of scope creep by <laughs> putting any of this, anything in there. Okay. I, I, I tend to do that because I want to fix it all. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So you guys have all discussed that though. You just want, you want to get my input on that? The... Yeah, I mean, Ken and I have been back and forth a couple of times today yeah. about, you know, scope. Um, so I guess the, I mean, the bottom, the, the two-minute two version is that, you know, do we 
just prop up what we have as we have it and then fix it later? Or do we, you know, make this, like the schema, for example, do we take the, do we take the schema as it is and, or do we really, um, you know, look at it? How, how does it really fit well in the Cellini? And, you know, so is it, you know, is it like a, is it a quick and dirty or is it a, let's put, let's put a little extra effort into it and make it a product, you know, instead of, you know, there's something we can maybe sell <laughs> outside of, you know, core. Gotcha. Okay. I'll take a, take a look at that. Uh... Mm -hmm. ASAP. Uh, so for this week, uh, everyone is still um, making progress on the bug fix sprint, or at least for today, tomorrow, until we resolve moving off this bug fix sprint. Um, yeah, we'll check that out. Yeah. Chris, if you can have a look at the, oh, yeah, I wanted to get your input on that, um, that service availability stuff, because you said you had thoughts on that. And I, I did have a sample PR um with my approach but you know i'm i'm sure it will differ significantly so i just thought a sample pr was an easy way to discuss it you know okay yeah i can take a look at that okay just taking a quick gander through the uh the sprint here there are nine tickets left that have not been uh that haven't been started anyway uh, in terms of progress only one was marked as a low priority that we can just boot off the sprint um so and then we've got three in progress so at the rate that we've been closing these tickets and just taking a uh you know your, your gut feel for how long these tickets are going to take to resolve um what do you think uh, does anyone have an opinion uh about how much longer we'll be working on on these oh before we do that i mean i went through those tickets and i think we said to move everything that was important to a, like a very high priority. And I been, I don't think there's anything in there that's just earth shattering right now, I guess is my point. I don't think anything is in there that's just gonna, it's gonna keep project rollover from going forward or anything like that. Um, so to me, if we wanna start, you know, moving forward on the next project and you know, do another bug fix sprint after we get the precise stuff rolled out, I would be fine with that. So that's, that's just my opinion, I don't know if, Chris or Ken, if you've been through that sprint or not. I, I agree with you. I, I think if you can get started on, uh, you know, um, propping up the or migrating, beginning to migrate the existing upload wake word process, right, and the scheme, associated schema, uh, you could probably start getting working on that right away uh, because that's really kind of the number one thing we want to get going, right? And, uh, you know, if the rest of these bugs are low priority, they could certainly wait for a future bug sprint. So I, I would concur with that, yeah. Okay, yeah, I just realized, as you said that, Chris, that um, I had misinterpreted these little orange arrows as red arrows. So I see they are all now medium priority, not high priority. So so we've got three in progress by Gez, and I imagine we should close those out. Uh, unless they're giving you trouble, guys, and you want to uh, put them back in the queue. No, uh, they're all the same thing, um, which okay. is what I need to get Chris's input on. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, okay, great. Well, then, um, so we've got, ooh, oh, we, do we have a new sprint for the, for the Pre Precise and Cellini roadmap? I did not create a sprint because I didn't, I, I kind of wanted you to, um, to see it or see what was there and see if you had any input on what do we do first. I think uh, we could talk about that right now and I could create a sprint. I think the, the most basic thing we can do is get the um, precise data, um, you know, get, get the database work done and get the API work done. Um, the front end stuff can happen as a secondary thing. Um, but I think just, just doing that will, just, will be a good first step. Would you, can you think that is a good approach as well? As well? Yeah, I can even uh, expand on that just a little bit. So, yeah, I think the um, the very first thing, like you mentioned, is uh, migrating the upload server, getting it running in Selenium and into the continuous integration and deployment process, um, getting the schema over there. Um, you know, you and I are looking at, uh, it, you know, does it make sense to just prop it up as is, or do you want, we want to, you know, uh, enhance it a little bit, that would be great. 
And then number two, I think right after that, coming right after that, would be the resurrection of the upgrade precise tagger that was developed that Josh was discussing. And I think the issue is that it's not throwaway code and we're going to do it for the third time. I, I tend to look at it more like we're going to pay down some technical debt and get it integrated into Cellini. Um, because it seems like the Cellini project had to do some triaging to get moving and get the tests going and all of that. And now might not be a bad time to rally back around and say, what got triaged and let's see if we can pay that technical debt down and get that functionality back. So that's kind of the way I'd like to look at it. That's I, am, old. I, am very, I am very much on board with finishing, finishing precise, putting it into full production as a actual software package and uh, putting it into maintenance. Um, we've been goofing off with it for several years now and um, there, we are not, inventing anything super fancy or new at this point let's let's finish it out and move on to the next task we have other things to do yeah okay so it sounds like um there's a couple of outstanding questions maybe uh in terms of the scope so i'll take a look at that and give you some feedback um but in the meantime um you all have useful work to do uh it's, that's just my main concern right um, and, um, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I mean, we're, we're moving forward with this precise, um, you know, productization effectively, right? We want to get the community back involved and, in, and in contributing to our, our data set. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let, let's get going on that. I will, um, I'll take a look at that, uh, today and get you some feedback so that that's not holding anything up. All right. Awesome. And then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and create the first sprint with the API and database stuff in it. And then if we, you know, after that we can decide, you know, scope wise what we want to do to make it, to make it finished, you know, get it completed. Okay. Uh, and do you guys need a description of what the, the boot process should look like on this? Is that, do you guys have a clear picture of what a stable compact flash operating system looks like, or would it be helpful for me to just write something out? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. So for- I think it would be helpful to, to get a write-up of what you're thinking, so that we can sort of see how, how the current process compares to that. Josh, are you looking something up? No, I said sure thing. Oh, okay. and then I, 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 I that. unmuted myself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, order of operations <laughs> the issue there. Uh, okay, uh, and you don't even have the extra my, button. Like one I other do. thing. Oh, sorry. My one other thing is um, just if we uh, with the decision making around the the GUI stuff. Um, do we want to keep pushing forward on, on that so that we can kind of do some testing and, and um, keep gathering data around how we're going to make that decision? And Well, actually, I feel like we've got a, a, a start, a pretty decent start on the, um, the criteria. So it'll be more populating um, the, you know, classic pros, cons table of, uh, for each criteria on on that. Okay. Is is making a cho what is making a choice on that blocking us from working on? Like, okay, I'm just wondering how far we can kick that can uh, down the road. Uh, well, I mean, uh, would we spend time on both sides of the fence, like every single week? So um, it doesn't block anything. It just split. I see. Uh, and this is because people are developing skills in for the Mark One. Well, Mark One doesn't have a GUI, so um. yeah. So the community community is developing skills for QT. Um, we're doing this project rollover in KD. Um, I catch up. Derek and I catch up with um, Blue Systems weekly, um, and 
try to unblock them on QT things. Um, but you know, at the moment, I'm intentionally not putting much effort into that QT side of things because, like, you know, I don't know which way we're heading. Right. Um, and yeah, so that's it's difficult there because you know, if we were actually pushing forward on it, then um, you know, there'd be it would change priorities. Pretty, I, pretty I think it's. I think. I think it's past time for Michael, for us to connect Michael with the leadership over at Blue Systems to have a discussion about that. Like they're putting real resources into it and we really appreciate, you know, all the work that they're doing. Um, at one point there was talks of having a much closer relationship with that organization and, you know, through a variety of missteps on our part and possibly some communication issues related to uh, languages, um, you know, those conversations ended. Um, you know, given that we're, you know, going through a fundraising process right now um, and that we're making big decisions about architecture, now might be a real good time to connect with the Blue Systems team. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, well, I mean, as you know, we already in, uh, intend to uh, connect with them on, uh, on other issues. So, yeah, absolutely. We can discuss that as well. Um, okay. And similarly for the Wi-Fi setup, right? That's not blocking us from doing anything aside from same issue. Adding Wi-Fi to the, yeah. 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 Okay. Nothing really. Okay. Right. Um, all right then. So any last words? No. Okay, great then. The, um, I guess we've all got our plan for the next couple of days. And I'll see you in, on Thursday, uh, not before. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, all right, see you all. Have a good week. You too. Bye.